All right. So um, <laughs> in this edition of the podcast, it's our first time doing three people. Woo! Woo! So on the podcast today, I have Hallie Desmit. Hello. And Michael. Van Buren. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> It's, we're getting jiggy on here. We're getting jiggy. I feel like it's a party No now. doubt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to bring you guys both on today uh, because of your experience in management in the food industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought we could start a little bit. Um, Haley and Michael met at Donkers, which is a restaurant family-owned up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in Marquette, and Haley has now moved out here, but she used to be a waitress there, Mm -hmm. and then Michael um, was a chef there, is a chef there, and has recently taken on a new position as the house manager. I guess you could put it that way, yeah. They're not really too big on titles. Yeah. Um, the way my position works right now is um, I have a kitchen manager and an assistant front of the house manager, and I kind of overlook that management while taking on my own responsibilities. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I guess they don't they they don't give out titles much. But if I had to compare it to a similar position from other restaurants that do give out titles, I'd say cl- probably assistant general manager. Okay. <clears throat> so. I think that gives you a unique perspective into um, what it's like to deal with people, not only in a restaurant space in a serving sense, but then also in a managing sense. Mm-hmm, for so, sure. um, I guess to start off, I was wondering um, what if you've had any differences between the two roles of serving. And Haley, you can also add an end to this. And you know, serving people in a food industry where food is often like a big source of comfort for people. Mm-hmm. And then versus now managing the staff that does serve. serve. Um, well, one of the reasons why I do really like Donkers a lot is when I first started and I was kind of learning about the philosophy of how they run is their num- one of the things they say is their number one customer is their employee. Mm-hmm. because they feel like they have to take care of their employees first in order for the employees to take care of the customers and then it's just a big cycle you know as it's as long as people are being happy you know everyone else is going to make each other happy and then you're making money and that makes the owners happy and it goes on and on but um yeah for sure it's important to keep the employees happy first and i've seen them go above and beyond in many different ways at Donkers specifically. I've worked at a couple other restaurants too where it's kind of like just show up and do your job and mm-hmm. we'll pay you. Mm-hmm. And it's just not like that there. And yeah, that's one reason why I like it a lot. And it's it's cool to put it, for me to actually think of it that way now that I'm talking about it. I've mm-hmm. never actually really thought deeply about it like that. but Right. So, hmm? so working like in that circular um, type of framework of management Mm -hmm. you feel like helps the whole process but I guess Haley then how do you feel like having that type of management makes you a better service worker a better waitress yeah having people happy like do you feel like they they cared about you you and it made you yeah because it made you want to show up for work and like actually put effort because you wanted to give back to them for taking care of you so Mm. well so i think Mm. that's what makes you a better worker is when you want to also help when you care about you know your manager's vision and um being as nice to them as they are to you Mm -hmm. So so what do you think is like, do you think it's hard to make people feel like that now in a manager role? Like, when you have, you know, like, the business end of things going into it now? Um, no. Kind of like what I said, more, the more that we make the employees happy, the more the customers are going to end up happy. It's just how it is. Like, a customer can tell between a real smile and when someone's actually enjoying being in a restaurant, mm-hmm. like, as a worker, mm-hmm. and then 
whether or not you're just like having a bad day and you're putting a fake smile on right. and you don't like your job. Right. And some people, you know, some restaurants, especially in the Marquette area that are, it's so small, like there's people that will still have that job even though they don't even put on a fake smile. Right. Because, you know, they, need to pay they the just need to. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think it's the business part of it doesn't really affect the way that I treat my employees at all. Obviously, I have to be strict about like standing around and that kind of stuff. But I think me personally, I do a pretty good job at like having fun while I'm working. Mm. And it kind of rubs off on the other employees as well. Because especially when I'm like cooking is when I think I have the most fun at work. And I mean, we're just saying ridiculous stuff and <laughs> like singing and dancing and having a good time. And like we're doing great, like as long as we're not distracted. And don't get me wrong, when it's super, super busy, like there's no time for that. Mm -hmm. And but also when it's super busy it's going to end up slowing down and then it's cleanup time and then we go right back to the fun mm -hmm. singing dancing kind of yeah. mood so yeah. i don't really find it challenging to like keep employees happy because i also look at myself as more of a leader than a boss mm, nice. and i'm not afraid to do anything that like my employees are also supposed to do if mm -hmm. that makes sense mm -hmm. like i'm never gonna be like go clean that bathroom i'm not doing it mm -hmm. like obviously there's times where i have someone else do it but then there's also times where i'll just do it myself like mm -hmm. especially if i'm the one available to do it that has the most time to do it which does mm -hmm. happen sometimes do you <clears> feel <throat> like that trait of taking a situation that maybe you know, you are at work, mm -hmm. but basically you said the way that you keep your customers happy is by having fun at work mm -hmm. and having fun with your job and being silly and dancing and stuff. Do you feel like you learned that trait from anywhere in particular, like as a coping mechanism or um, do you feel like you apply that outside of work as well? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's kind of... Um, I don't know. I feel like I've probably got it most from my mom, just like trying to make the most out of a crappy situation sometimes. And I, I honestly genuinely like what I do enough to where I don't think it's crappy. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I definitely have employees that are like in college just trying to get by and do think it's crappy. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I just... I know that if I go into work thinking it's going to suck, then it's most likely going to suck unless something spectacular out of nowhere happens. But if I go into work thinking I'm going to go see people I enjoy hanging out with mm -hmm. and I'm going to do stuff that I guess depends exactly what my responsibilities are that day because I do a lot of different stuff, but sometimes it's boring and it sucks. And sometimes if it's really busy and you get to meet new people and uh, Donkers is like a really big tourist attraction, especially in the summer. So you get to meet like a lot of new people mm. and see like from all over the world. Right. So I don't know. It's, I enjoy it. And I, yeah, I never try to, even when I'm having a bad day, I try to flip it around as fast as I can, yeah. I guess. So. Well, I feel like in the short time that I've known you, that's like a special trait that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, not taking yourself too seriously, even yeah. when you might be in a more, like, hierarchical role. role, uh, role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, like, feel that way a lot in the hospital. The more comfortable I get as a nurse mm -hmm. and the less seriously I have to, I feel like I have to take myself and the more fun I have with my job, the better, the more approachable I become, I think, yeah. to younger staff and to my patients. And I overall just have a better day. For sure. Yeah. So I think there's something to being almost like confident enough in your position to not take yourself so seriously because you know that you know what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Success. And employees like totally respect if you make a mistake and you're just like, my bad. Right. Like. And they actually, that makes them comfortable because, you know, you want your employees to feel empowered. You want them to go and do stuff that maybe, not all the time, and it's 
situation can be choppy, but like you want them to almost feel like they're powerful enough to manage Mm -hmm. like certain situations, you know, you don't want them to come to a manager for everything. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good. Yeah. To like make them feel empowered. And yeah, I mean, like I said before, I don't, I'm not a boss. I'm a leader. I'm, I'm not like strict. I'm not yelling at people. I'm basically, if I see small mistakes, I correct them like that. And then that's pretty much it. And I think I get most of my respect out of just trying to do a good job. And I think I'm doing a good job. At least most people there respect me, I guess I would say. (laughs) (laughs) I get it. Oh yeah. Okay. (laughs) I think another huge thing though, is also like our owner and Mm -hmm. our bosses above you like encourage you to be the fun bring that like to the atmosphere oh, like yeah. if they didn't have your back to do that and then we're like no you need to be more serious at work yeah. and this is like a job you know then we probably wouldn't have the downfall to the employees having fun too like we do have a lot of fun but i've been told by like ashley and sarah our mm-hmm. head managers how much they love that you bring that to work every day Mm -hmm. and they encourage you to be like that. So I think that's a really important factor too. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think that's actually a trait that you also share Haley. And like, even on days when you don't want to do something like you still also like bring that to the table and like versus like if I'm in a bad mood everybody knows I'm in a bad mood. (laughs) (laughs) It's not easy to do. It's, so I'm just like interested about, um, so I think obviously not taking yourself too seriously, Mm -hmm. having confidence in what you're doing to have a good time. And then like, what else, what else do you think helps you bring that to the table, whether it be in like the restaurant business or as a nurse or just in everyday life? Um, I would say other people would do that I think or I think that when me and Mike worked together like we would joke around a lot and it kind of united the front of the house mm. and the kitchen because mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I could rub off of his energy that sounded <laughs> bounce off <laughs> of his energy <laughs> and be more silly when you have someone to be silly with and who's kind of just like right. joking around you know yeah so that's what and then other people want to get in on the jokes and stuff mm-hmm Um, Yeah, yeah. other people definitely, I agree, play a big role. That kind of goes back to what you said about the head owners. Like, if if they didn't give us the opportunity to be silly but also take our job seriously at the same time, then it wouldn't be possible. Because I'm not going to name other places I've worked for, but I've worked for other places where it was, you know, like I said before, do come to work, do your job, and then leave, and we'll pay you. Mm -hmm. And it's... There's no room to be silly and have fun. It's just boom. Work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know that you um, have dreams to own your own restaurant one day. I do. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the origin of that dream. The origin of that dream. All right. <laughs> so um, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a lot of things, none of which were a restaurant owner. <laughs> Um, I think one was an astronaut, one was a veterinarian, because I love animals. Shout out to Tucker. Uh, Shout out to Tucker, (laughs) my dog at home, that I will see very soon. It's the only reason why I'm somewhat excited to leave here at all, because it's beautiful here. But anyway, um, (laughs) um, let's see, where did I spark this dream? Well, I've always kind of like to set the bar at the top and then if I've realized I can't reach that bar then I'll set goals a little bit lower and to me like owning a business has always been kind of like the I don't know the top for me I guess you could say like managing a business was the first or managing a restaurant was the first step I started out as a dishwasher my mom doesn't know how to cook too much Uh, no one in my family really does Um, 
so I kind of had to learn my love for cooking. Like I said, I started off as a dishwasher. Then I was like an order taker at a uh, Bonanza, which was like a buffet style restaurant. And then I went from that to um, a host at Applebee's. And then eventually I became the host trainer, then a server, server trainer. And this whole time, I still didn't really have this figured out yet. I was kind of just doing jobs to get me through college. And then um, when I went to Aubrey's, which is a pizzeria and grill in Marquette, um, which I really like as well, they that's when I became a manager and I got to cook a little bit and I started and I ate a meal for free. So every, and I mean, most of what people ate there was pizza, but I didn't want to eat pizza every single day, even though I'm not going to lie. There were some weeks I ate pizza every single day <laughs> <laughs> and then I would cook my own meals there and they had a bunch of different stuff. And, um, it was, I basically did it when it was slow and it was winding down. So I didn't really have to limit myself on time too much and got to get creative and I also worked with some people that were creative with food and that's when I really found my love for like cooking mm. I would say and then I always knew I wanted to own a business and then at that point I had been working in a restaurant for what four or five years by then mm -hmm. and then realized I mean I really I like it like I don't mm -hmm. mind showing up to work I'm not s as stressed as everyone else around me <laughs> seems to be all it's the time kinda like this momentum of you you have you literally started out as a dishwasher and then yeah to have gotten this momentum to roll up to higher positions mm -hmm. and this probably innate characteristic of wanting to keep reaching new levels and new bars hey you're a gamer yeah. Here we go. I am a gamer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just like... Maybe next level. I'm very, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm very competitive, and I like to set myself at the highest bar. And I'm not going to get super upset if I never own my own restaurant, but I think I'm capable of mm -hmm. doing it, so why not try? Why not try, yeah. Yeah, so, right. and if it doesn't work out, then I'll go from there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like just after meeting your mom for a little bit, she definitely kind of gives off that, like, ethos of... Um, she's in her 30s, 40s? 40s. 40s, and mm -hmm. she's, um, like, going back to college. Like, yeah. they're just all of these societal markers that we have. She seems to kind of just put those to the side. And Oh, yeah, she doesn't care. Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. And, like, if you want to go for something, then go for it. Yeah, and I mean, that's definitely... She's taught me pretty much almost everything I've known, like... I've always had, like, a father figure in my life because mm -hmm. I've had, like, my real dad was with me till I was, like, two, but then uh, we moved down to Arizona, and I had a stepdad my mom actually got married to, um, and I was there from, from when I was three till ten, so that was kind of, his name was Troy. He was my father figure then, and we spent a lot of time, too, but... Most of my morals and, like, lessons I've learned, I feel like, have mostly been from my mom. Mm -hmm. And now I have a different stepdad, actually. His name is Perry, and he's by far, like, the most influential guy in my life. Mm -hmm. He is, like, one of the most hardworking, mm -hmm. calm. I feel like I get, like, his calmness mm -hmm. from him from sh for sure. Mm -hmm. And Do you yeah. feel like this, like wanting to keep raising the bar like having this like growth mindset comes at all from like it being you and your mom despite these different fa father figures in your life yeah i mean my mom pretty much told me since day one that i was smart enough to do whatever i put my mind to and mm -hmm. i honestly think that is the same for most people if mm -hmm. one like 99% of people, if they just focused all their energy on being the best at one thing, mm -hmm. I think most people could do it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think I'm super spectacular in any way for like thinking I can do that. But um, I think most people don't think that way. Mm -hmm. Don't well, think I, that they can I'm be whatever they want. If given like your unique growing up situation, if mm -hmm. you, and I think. I mean, maybe I'm generalizing here, but, like, as a male in mm -hmm. our society, I think you're taught to kind of to protect women. Yeah. And I just wonder if you're 
like subconsciously have ever felt like you needed to protect your mom and continuing to grow and rise up is a way that you can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't necessarily think I need to protect my mom, but I definitely want to like give her the world if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I think she definitely give back, I guess maybe. Yeah, yeah, give back and like I just want to spoil her. I want to <laughs> eventually like, yeah. but that's also kind of just how I am in general. I mean, obviously my mom would be the first person to get spoiled if I ever you know won the lottery one day, <laughs> something like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm the same way. I know we kind of talked about it the other day. How like we think it w- we both thought it would be cool to like own our own land and literally start like our own community with our friends and like obviously it couldn't be just our friends otherwise we'd have to have a lot of different skill sets (laughs) to do something like that but Mm -hmm. but yeah I don't know no I just I noticed that about your relationship with your mom from the beginning like Mm -hmm. you can tell that there's this like um connection and like level of support that the two of you share that nothing will ever get in the way of that oh for sure yeah definitely So, um, I was listening to this, uh, podcast about Mark Manson who wrote, um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And he, (laughs) the book now has like sold like over 8 million copies. Good for him. That's a great title. First book, (laughs) first book he's ever written. And he, um, quoted he's quoted saying from every metric, we are safer, healthier, there's less, there's less conflict in the world, yet at the same time, mental health issues are on the rise. Um, so in response to this, I'm wondering, like, do you feel like being in your 20s, we are able to dream bigger dreams because all of our basic needs are being met? But at the same time, we are also in this unique place of being in our 20s and having so many options with the internet and driving and planes and phones. And, like, we literally can almost do anything we want. And that creates this anxiety. You go ahead, Hal. Okay. Thanks. Um, I, I honestly really think that the way you are raised totally affects that because I do think we can dream as big as we want but it depends on our support system and if Mm -hmm. they encourage us to dream from Mm -hmm. day one because I believe everyone here in this room I know was encouraged to dream from day one to reach like the biggest stars and be your best self Mm -hmm. but I know plenty of people who have been like encouraged to just follow the path that makes the smartest sense Mm -hmm. and like what is safe because right you know or like females what is safe for us is to get married and have kids because that's just and I know like plenty of girlfriends who have been encouraged to do that you know and men like I don't know you guys got to get the job and make the money so I just feel like it depends on how you were raised and Mm -hmm. if you were told that you could do anything you want from day one yeah you know, that's a super good point. Because, like, think yeah. of me when I had all the options in the world. Our, mm-hmm. You know, our mom did encourage us to do whatever. but And dad. And dad, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, like, when Matt Children's was proposed to me, that one was smart and safe. And I didn't know if I'd have another job. So, you know, but it wasn't my dream. Mm-hmm. So, luckily my parents and you had my back when I turned and you Michael had my back when I turned it down and said no because you guys Mm -hmm. were like you need to go for what your dream is Mm -hmm. so I think that's a really good point about your support system in this time when we have all the options in the world Mm -hmm. what do you what do you think about that um I think it's interesting to think about what you said about like having more time to just Mm -hmm. think Mm -hmm. and that causing anxiety um myself I don't really get anxiety very often which I'm very thankful for because I know that does affect a huge portion of at least the United States I'm not too sure I haven't done much research outside of the country but um yeah I mean it makes sense because our mind would be occupied by doing like littler things back in the day like even 
cooking, I know, is mm. something that's so easy to, you know, just go get fast food real quick. And even though I love to cook, I still do that myself. So I'm not, like, taking myself out of that at all. But, yeah, it's interesting. Um, we have more time to get in our own heads, mm -hmm. for sure. And I feel like there is a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. I know myself, like, when I was in high school, I always felt like I had to first of all, graduate high school, and then had to go to college right out of high school, not taking a break, and I had to know what I wanted to do, yeah. like, right away, mm -hmm. which is just silly, because, like you mentioned before, my mom just went back to college, mm -hmm. and she's in her 40s. She has a good job now, but she doesn't want to stop, mm -hmm. but um, that's just kind of how we should be worried about w doing what makes us happy mm -hmm. rather than doing what we think society will make us look good. Right. If that makes sense. I feel right. like I kind of worded that a little bit weird, but no, I agree. I mean, I think that's a super common experience is like <clears throat> we have all this time now to get in our heads mm -hmm. and it's almost like because we have more time, we're expected to know we what what we want to do, what makes us happy, and, like, where this path is going, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so it's almost like we have all these options, but you're right, without the support system, you're not necessarily going to feel like you do have the options. But at the same time, there's this uncertainty surrounding the options because we're you're still developing and growing constantly every day, and that part is never going to be taken out of it, yeah. regardless of how much time and resources you have, I think. Do you think For that's sure. true, or do you think, like, with the creation maybe of, like, artificial intelligence where robots start doing more of our, even more for us, mm -hmm. like, what what will our role become in... What will our role become? Oh. You know, like, there's always viruses changing, so I have job security <laughs> as a nurse. Yeah, I mean, they'll probably teach a robot how to cook right. and serve, so I'm, I might be screwed. But right. but it's like, almost like, what will the next generation, like, what will our kids have to face? Yeah. If Because I almost feel like we're in a generation where our parents didn't have quite the techno tech boom that we had so then we entered into the situation where it's like okay you have all these resources what are you going to do with your life now it better be magnificent almost mm -hmm. and you better know exactly what your plan is yeah I even agree. if even if people don't say that out loud yeah yeah so, i remember feeling that way at 16 like the same like i need to know what i want to do mm -hmm. for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and i was glad that i knew i wanted to do nursing but think like even at 22 my age right now yeah. like Still, it's not irrational to not know what you want to do the next right. 40, 50 years of your life. It is such a huge decision to ask any 16 or 18-year-old. And I think even at 40, it's unfair mm -hmm. to, like, create this trajectory towards a silver lining when once you get to that silver lining, often you're not even, that's not even, that's not happiness. That's not what makes you happy. Yeah. Yeah. No. But with, like, technology and education growing, we're expected to use it. Like, mm -hmm. we're expected to take advantage that we can go to a four-year college right after high school. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the new... Yeah, I think also our generation's kind of like any other generation that will come or has come before us because we... You know, we watched the Internet become a big thing. And, like, we watched a lot of technology be put into place into society and like the generation before us had way less to work with technology wise but also we were told to go play outside and like not play video games for too long most of the generation i feel like when we were kids had and nowadays i know like these kids started with all this mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that's not i'm not putting them down in any way whatsoever they have no control over that but that's kind of like what they're born into is like a super tech heavy world. And I feel like at our age, we kind of got to see like half mm -hmm. and half. Like we yeah. might have been kids, kids when mm -hmm. this stuff was coming out, but we still saw like the way adults were reacting to it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think it's interesting. I think our generation kind of gets to see both sides of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So I guess with all of, you know, the resources that were given in this 
illusion that we're chasing that w- that it's easier now because of technology to to achieve happiness and to have a set path for for your life from an earlier age because of the tech boom do you guys feel like it's a right to be happy or do you feel like it's a choice ooh um, um go ahead if you if you go, okay. go ahead <laughs> Um, I would say, well, okay, your question was a little confusing. I would say it's a choice, and I might answer this wrong, because you're, like, There's implying no that... <laughs> Thank you. That's an opinion <laughs> question. <laughs> I, it seems to me that you're implying that our world, and maybe it, that is true, that our world thinks that all this technology is going to make us happy in this world. And, like, we're going to keep improving technology until what? Like, is that our ultimate goal, happiness? Because I think if you logically think that, like, a cell phone is going to bring your happiness, then you're an idiot. So right. I think, I think like, I think even people... <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I think... My new phone made me pretty <laughs> happy. I don't know. Yeah, but think of how much happy you are. And I... It's becoming more aware that when people get outdoors and actually get back to more basics and and simplistic, a lot of times people are like, oh, wow, I'm way more happier when I'm Mm -hmm. hiking a mountain and seeing these views than playing Call of Duty. Uh, (laughs) No, but I I think (laughs) (laughs) think what you're pointing to is like this, this huge phenomena that we're in right now with this artificial intelligence. Like the more we get into it, the more... I think that is people's goal, literally, is like, let's see if we can make it even easier for us to be happy. But you're pointing to a really good point that happiness isn't found in things being easier for us. Yeah. And it's a choice. It's a choice. Even think, like, honestly, when Walmart went to all those, like, kiosks where we check out ourselves, I do use them. But how many times have you, like, checked out with a really old woman and she just, like, made your day because she was just so happy Uh to check you out? Like, we're eliminating that human-to-human contact Mm -hmm. that I feel like our souls really thrive on. Mm -hmm. And I need when I'm, like, sad is someone else. Mm -hmm. Not um, a technology. Right. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Like human connection. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, do I believe it's a choice or a what? What was the question? Choice or a right. Choice or a right. Um, I think... Uh, let's see, that's such a complicated question, to be honest. Cause, Welcome like, to Hannah's happiness. <laughs> no, that's fine. Like, it's making me critically think, which is a good thing, but... Um, I don't know if I could say if it was either or. Well, I guess, here, let me help you. Like, so I think, um, you know, we're we're in a very wealthy country, right? You go Correct. to somewhere undeveloped, mm-hmm. and they're, they have to work 16 hours a day. They get paid a dollar. They yeah. only eat rice and beans. Yeah, you often go to those places, and they're some of the happiest people you've ever met. Mm-hmm. And I think we forget that. Yeah, I mean... I think so, happiness to everyone is means something different. Okay. Like, obviously, being happy is, like, a common emotion everybody knows, but, like, everyone in this world is going to be happy because of different things. I think there's some that are, like, common. Like, love, obviously, makes people happy mm-hmm. and, like, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. But... I think everyone needs, like, a different amount of, you know, human contact. Everyone needs a different amount of, like, work they're doing that day. Because some people are totally happy, like me, sitting on their butts playing video games for eight (laughs) hours. And then there's some people that also, like, want to hike Mount Everest, and that makes them happy. Mm -hmm. Like, But I would say in each of those situations, what a lot of people miss is that you're being challenged, though, in that video game. Yeah, that's true. And and you're also being challenged when you're climbing Mount Everest. That's true. I think, yeah, accomplishing a challenge definitely does make you feel good mm-hmm. inside, no matter who you are. And our world is trying to make things easier, easier. less challenging. Oh, okay. yeah. she's trying to link. Yes, yeah. and I just feel like we all forget that. Like, describe to me a situation where you, like, were really happy. 
um, off the top of my head. Just think, the last time you were super happy, what was going on? Um, I would say yesterday when we were hiking. Mm-hmm. Was and about- you were heavy breathing and <laughs> wanting water. Oh, okay, and now. <laughs> No, so were all of us. Yeah. But she, what she's trying to say is it was yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, well, I guess the challenge would have been, like, uniting, like, my family oh, with your family. Okay. Because I was mm-hmm. really nervous okay. about that. Mm-hmm. And then watching, like, you and his mom get along. Yeah. It was really... That made me really happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't nervous about that at all, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I but yeah, but you don't get nervous. This is why. Like, okay, I don't <laughs> never get nervous. I get nervous not Maybe very when often. I fall but... off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, but I just think that's like so recently. You know, I just got back from Iceland in Iceland, and I, then I I noticed this experience too when um, Haley and I went to. And our friend Alyssa went um, camping throughout Utah and Arizona, and it was winter, and it was freezing, and Haley ended up sleeping in the car half the time, and we were hungry, and we didn't have any plan, and we, you know, but at the end of that, I felt so alive, and like the same thing happened when I was in Iceland, it was, I didn't shower for nine days, my routine was completely. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just I just kidding. This this month, I've kind of been thinking about how good challenge is for bringing about true happiness. I would say mm-hmm. to add to that, though, I don't think all challenge or I don't think you can reach happiness or you can have happy moments without there being a challenge. Okay. But I do think when something challenges you a lot and you achieve it, it is happy, mm-hmm. or it does make you really happy. Like the other day, I had my first successful shift of handling four patients basically on my own, and I felt so happy because I was so challenged that day, and I just kicked butt. Right. So. So tell me about a time when you didn't feel challenged but happy. Well, I think whenever I, like, see a bunch of people in a room, like, laughing and getting along, that makes my soul happy. But there's, like, no challenge there for me. Mm-hmm. It's just well, like what about group. that makes you happy, though? It's because people are getting along, and that's a challenge. Yeah. Our society doesn't get along naturally. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. I guess. I mean, I guess there's, like, simpler challenges. Right. But it's not, you... it wasn't, like, a personal challenge right, to right. put people in a room that are friends and have them right laugh. Yeah, I think the way you're looking at it, Hannah, is mm-hmm. kind of like, I don't know if you guys have heard um, this before, but... It's what is it, what is the quote? Um, there's no such thing as free lunch. I think it is mm. because you might have not had to pay for that lunch, but what are you eating? I mean, you are a vegan, so you're not eating chicken. But <laughs> the chicken, you know, if you're eating chicken, a chicken had to give that its life for that. Mm. Also, a worker had to put, you know, hours into packaging it, and someone had to cook it. Right. It's it's kind of. I feel like you're kind of putting that into a similar way right. of like challenges and right. happy because there is you can you can definitely say there's a challenge to pretty much anything. you're right and maybe i'm making like a a cause what's it called a correlation without causation am i saying that right like yeah, maybe I'm, I'm linking events yeah. that aren't necessarily correlated but yeah i just think it's something interesting to think about and you know whether it's in the workplace or like in your own relationship mm-hmm. um that challenge can be a good thing. Um, so yeah. I, think I do think I that was agree. a huge, like, whoa, we just solved a great life mystery. We're trying to make things easier when challenges yeah. bring us happiness. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Hit the nail on the head. Right. Yeah, I agree. Challenges definitely do make people happy coming yes. out on top of them. <laughs> Unless they fail, then they're probably not going to be too happy. But. Right. So I listened to um, another podcast. <laughs> Okay. And so do you like podcasts? <laughs> and there was a quote from Rachel Hollis um, saying that either your relationship is either growing or dying constantly. Ooh, that you're is a good one. N- you're never in really a stagnant state if you really look at it. Um, yeah. And I guess how, like, do you guys agree with that? Well, I guess let's start there. Do you agree with that? Um, I can go first on this one just because I already have an answer in my head. Um, when I think about that question, I instantly think about my mom and my, the stepdad I have now, and they pretty much have a routine. Mm 
mm. like to the second. My mom goes to school, has a full time job, and takes care of my grandma right now. So literally, she there's not a lot of room for like free time and doing stuff like that. But even though that is the case, I still feel like they're growing. Mm. They're not stagnant. They're still they've been with each other for oh my gosh. I, they knew they were with each other and broke up at one point, but they were with each other when I was a baby. So they've literally been like off and on for like 24 years mm. and they're still like learning and growing from each other all the time. Mm. So I definitely agree with that statement for sure. And <sighs> even if they were like not growing, would you say? Dying. Dying. <laughs> I don't know if it was dying, but <laughs> was no, it I, dying? Oh, yeah, I did say dying. Oh, okay, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, like, a little bit, like, extreme. But, yeah. like, it's just, No, like, I, kn like, I know dying? what you mean by yeah, that. Yeah. Not, like, literally dying, but, right. like, D relationship, yeah. like, degressing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like you definitely, you're not always going to just be growing and no. never dying, but. So I guess then if you agree with that statement that that is kind of like pretty much a state of a relationship. Mm -hmm. Do you, what ways do you help a relationship continue to grow? Um, well, I kind of like to take it day to day for the most part, but I do think planning things out, like coming here, like if, you know, if I just never decided to plan to come see Hallie at all, like that would not be good at the same time. So I think like making time for each other, um, no matter what, is just something that you got to do when it's just like one on one time. And since we do live so far away from each other, a lot of the time it is just FaceTime or even just being like a regular phone call. Um, what else? I think it's important to make each other feel significant. Mm, that's a really good one. For sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I don't need to be complimented a lot, <laughs> but I definitely need to hear it like every once in a while. I feel oh, yeah, like. I just figured out what his, we have the same love language. It's, okay. words, it's words of affirmation. And okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have picked that for myself either, but like, I just like to be acknowledged. Yeah, yeah, like, I like to be appreciated, mm -hmm. and it doesn't, and I don't need to hear it every day, no. but it, and sometimes it literally can be a thank you, I appreciate you doing that, and right. that's it, that's all I need to hear, mm -hmm. and Hallie's a little bit different, <laughs> but I also, that's another thing, you gotta, you gotta, like, know your differences and mm -hmm. not get frustrated about them. Mm -hmm. It's just something that you have to learn about each other and mm -hmm. compromise about it. Compromise is huge in a relationship. Like, right. oh, my gosh, there's so many things we don't agree on. And one of them <laughs> we learned this trip especially is music. <laughs> we we have hate each other's music. Yeah, but, like, I'm... G but like to I the point where I might take these out of the podcast room and wear them on the way back yeah. to the so I can't hear okay. your music. Okay, but I do compromise <laughs> with you, and I've started listening to your little EDM music or stuff with a beat. Oh, my I have, little EDM. <laughs> <laughs> I Anyways, so, but how do you, how do you feel like you help a relationship grow? Oh. <laughs> so we're going back to the original Bumble. question. <laughs> Wait, can I say one comment though, real quick? Yeah. That it's funny he's words of affirmation if you think that is his love language. Yeah. Because you always, I like struggle with people whose love language is words she of does. affirmation. She like does. Hannah is the one. Like mm -hmm. I know, I know it once I see it like down the line, but I never remember to say because that's not my love language. It's not your I love don't language. think that way at all. No, it's mm -hmm. not. But but see, I know that about you, and I'm sure Mike's learning that about you. So mm -hmm. I've learned to have a at, become at peace with that with you. But like that's something that took me a lot of time because yeah. that is my love language, and yeah. I know though that you're you don't mean to not say yeah. something or to acknowledge the effort I've put into something, but. That's just not something you think about. And so it's like, so like in a relationship and like even in our relationship, allowing it to grow is me understanding you better. And I think one of those ways, well, or just that, that is a tool is understanding each other better, yeah. you know. But anyways, what do you think? 
Okay, wait. Say the question again. So just, like, how do you help a relationship grow versus oh. if you agree that a relationship is either Grow-y, growing Yeah, or I definitely agree with that one. Um, I think learning is huge. Hold on. Okay, I think that accepting that humans are not perfect is huge. Mm-hmm. And I think for the long, at least, like, with me in relationships, for the longest time, I used to... You were either perfect and you never messed up Mm -hmm. or I was done with you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, like, learning, like, there will be things that I don't always like about you, but that's okay because it makes you different. Mm -hmm. And, like, learning that... That is such a hard thing. It's such a hard thing to learn, Mm -hmm. but it helps your relationship grow. Right. Because... So you're saying I'm perfect. (laughs) (laughs) So far, no. No, I'm just kidding. Spoiler alert, they're in a relationship. (laughs) Oh, wow. I don't think we said that yet. We did not say that. (laughs) Well, now they know. Now they know. Um, But also, like, um, even with that, like, being humble to, like, accept who they are, who they are, I think so much of this world, like, wants to change people and I even talked to this with your mom like I feel like so many people get into a relationship where you want to change them to be the perfect image and I don't think that works and I like love learning things about you and like accepting you just how you are like I don't want to change you but I think you constantly have to you're accepting a different image every day because we constantly grow as humans and change who we are naturally (coughs) if that makes sense Mm mm-hmm so yeah, I guess then my my next question to that though is like how how do you put that into practice? Because it is so hard to like yeah be like you annoy me, and then we live in this world of like constant yeah. options and choices, and like how do you not just move on to the next person? Yeah, mm-hmm. well, why well, focus on the good? I think like I try to change with you, especially I've really worked on like how I can be different where it's not like no 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 different where it's not changing me like one thing i know like when you have like a problem you are not someone who wants advice i know that from you after like learning about you so i have learned to just listen and i bite my tongue from giving that advice that i want to give but that works and it makes our relationship better and i feel like i grow with you that way because i feel like when i if i give you advice you just put up a wall um, Not that you put up a wall, but it just isn't as... He just more wants somebody to listen. Listen, which so yeah. do I. But I feel like that like helps us be on a more communicative and good page is if I just listen instead of trying to give you advice. Yeah. You know? And yeah, it's, if I want advice, I'll ask for it usually. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, Things like that. Or, um, yeah, that's a good observation. I've never thought of myself that way, but it definitely makes yeah. sense. I think, like, small things, small things make the hugest difference, you know, versus the big things. I try to focus more on the small things, Mm -hmm. like the little things you can do to just, like, brighten some one day. Mm -hmm. Well, your day. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What do you you think, Michael, in terms of um, how you, when somebody, when your partner is really annoying you and you're like, God... I could go be with somebody else. What makes you want to stay in the relationship? Or st- remember to be committed in the relationship. Um. Well, I really, I'm not the best at following. Not w- what you just asked me. What something else I'm going to bring up, but I'm not the best at following this rule. But one of the rules I have is like, don't end communications like on a bad note so Mm. like don't go to bed mad at each other like if she's about to go out and i'm about to go to bed because i work in the morning and she has the next day off or whatever and vice versa like neither of us should be going like out when we're mad at each other Mm. and that kind of thing i think it and i say that i'm not the best at following this just because um i do sometimes when i'm mad i like to just n- not talk to anyone and just like think it through with myself but usually if I'm mad I'm not gonna like go out or anything anyway I'm mm-hmm. gonna sit at home and like think about why I'm mad and that kind of thing but I don't know right I'm 24 and I'm not really looking to like just go 
hook up with random girls. Mm-hmm. I'm looking like to date someone and like eventually marry someone mm-hmm. and like it, I'm not going to give up over something so easily when obviously I was connected to her for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I think it's worth being patient and um, learning about each other as much as I can. And like at some point, maybe I'll say I don't want to do it anymore, but right now I do. So I'm going to, you know, keep being patient with it. Be patient. Mm -hmm. And like I don't expect anything crazy to happen out of it, like right now. Right. Well, and I think you said something really important there about um, remembering back to the reason that you connected to the person in in the first place. Yeah. You know, and recalling those times. So then you're like, okay, this is why I put up with this annoying thing that they do or Mm -hmm. this is blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and you're right. And then if it gets to a point where the level is not yeah in the favor then you move on to the next event exactly um, because everyone's gonna have something about them you don't like right it's that's just Mm. gonna happen you're not gonna meet someone where they never (laughs) piss you off right oh yeah except for you obviously you're perfect too that's why we're perfect together (laughs) we're both perfect (laughs) yeah um so And then I guess I just wanted to talk a little bit, too, about how long distance can add an even, like, greater challenge to relationship. And I know we've talked a little bit about how challenge can bring bring the greatest happiness is what we kind of synthesize or deduce or whatever. Um, But do you guys, in your experience of long-term relationship, having come from a relationship where you got to be together... Mm-hmm. I'm struggling with this right now, but so do you feel like the lo- the challenge of long term is or long distance um, could bring greater joy, or do you actually think like this is a challenge that actually just sucks? Do you want to go first, or you want me to go? I'll go. Go ahead. Um, I, honestly, I think it just sucks. Like. I think it makes us stronger. So I think in the long run, it is worth it because I think, like, long distance is for no sissies. Like, you know, you are either committed to it because it's not fun and, you know, there's a million fish in the sea. So I think, but if you're... Like seven billion, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But if your relationship perseveres, I think that speaks so much more strength to your relationship because you guys really had Mm -hmm. to like put the effort I was telling Hannah this the other day I think long distances can be the easiest relationship because you don't have to make plans to see them every day Mm -hmm. you can send a couple texts and whatever you know what I mean but like to really put in work and like try to align your plans so you can make phone calls like our schedules are different when he's off I'm usually on and so like making phone calls or like figuring out plans of where to go and like fun things to do because it's still like a plane ride to see him or him to see me kind of thing Mm -hmm. so it's like a lot of work and I think that Mm -hmm. um you know if you really didn't care for someone it would just suck and it wouldn't be worth it but if you care about someone and you make it through the long distance then wait like, at the beginning of this you said it sucked <laughs> <laughs> i know it does suck <laughs> no, but I, I mean like it sucks but it does make your relationship so much stronger than if you just had someone well and i think what you're saying also is that it points out very quickly if it's a relationship that is not worth, worth long it, yeah. like or like it almost like shortens the time like what like oh this person is not right for me then yeah because it's like mm-hmm. very very quickly points to like your communication habits your all of the things that yeah, come you with your are really good um, at communicating <laughs> your like trust in each other what? <laughs> you know all those things you know very you have to, they almost become hyper intensified in a, like a long distance yeah. relationship yeah and when we like during the summer we neither of us wanted to do long distance because yeah. we both knew how much it sucked like Right. Kind of thing, but I think we liked each other <laughs> right. enough, obviously. To hey. do well, I, I think too that, like, maybe it's because of our society, but I think women maybe think about all this stuff a little bit more. So I'm interested, like, is this something that, like, as a 
And I'm not, like, trying to make a generalization. But no, as a that's guy fine. that you, like, even think about, or what is your, exp- like, is it hard for you? Is it not? Is it just, like, um, something you accept? Is it? So, I kind of think it's a little bit of both, because, like she said, it sucks. But also, you know, when we see each other for the first time in a long time, that's, like, I feel like that's definitely more special than if when we were hanging out this summer, like, I just came and picked you up and we went to the beach, like, you know. I didn't scream and hug you. Yeah, you didn't scream and jump on me and (laughs) surprise me, well, try to surprise me. Uh Uh-huh. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely hard. You, I think you guys both had good points. It tests your communication. And like you said, Hannah, um, like if you wanted to drop it, it would be so easy Mm -hmm. because, you know, I mean, you can't even do it face to face. It's not possible. So it would be like a phone call or a text Mm -hmm. and it does take more patience for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, like Hallie said, it tests tests our relationship, mm-hmm. and in the end, once hopefully one day we do end up meeting somewhere mutual, <clears throat> um, we'll know that we're strong because of it, mm-hmm. for sure. Because mm-hmm. like if you do long distance for three years, I'm not saying it's gonna be three years, just kind of putting that. <laughs> but, and then you are together all the time i mean i guess that could either go, that could go either way though too but we well, have been together every day yeah, for a whole summer and liked, liked that better right. than long distance. i think there's a having come from a relationship that like we fluctuate between being in long distance and together there's this mm-hmm. there's a also a, a curve when you get back together like learning yeah. how to be with each other again all the time yeah definitely but i would agree with you like i think the challenge though of it once you get back to like your relationship and being around each other and get that like comfort again Mm -hmm. um it's always more worth it so yeah yeah i think the point of this podcast maybe is that a challenge does bring a lot of happiness i agree (laughs) i definitely think it does yeah for sure just had a point and i forgot it now well Oh, uh, I was going to say something about the generalization, which I don't know if it's more just, like, about, like, how, like, maybe men handle, like, long distance easier, but I do feel like, well, you know me, like, I've definitely struggled harder at times with long distance than you have. You also, like, touch. That's your love language. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, you know my love language? Should I tell you? She told me. Oh, I did? (laughs) <laughs> tell me that. I mean, even if you didn't, it'd be easy to tell. But yeah, it's funny. Like once Which, you like say them out loud, you can pretty much tell what people are. Yeah. yeah. But you, yeah. Um. But either way, but I don't know if that's also like me being the planner and the worrier. I'm definitely the worrier out of the two oh, of yeah. us. So mm-hmm. I don't know and if the it's planner. and the planner. I don't know if it's those two that make long distance and like I feel more of like a weight. Right. Like making this succeed, right. and I think about the future where he's so good at being like day to day in the moment. Mm-hmm. And if I feel like if I was just day to day, I wouldn't be like, oh god, January and February are filling up, and I'm not gonna see you, and that's gonna suck. And like then I worry, and then I need to like plan. And mm-hmm. You're like, yeah, what's for lunch tomorrow? <laughs> I don't even think that far ahead. It's like, what no, am I gonna eat but right that's now? Like something I adore about <laughs> Which you is I'm you're always good thinking. at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just bringing it back to just like, we'll yeah. get there when we get but there. But it is good to have you be a planner so we don't, like, not ever <laughs> see each other. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it balances out pretty yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. No, and I think it's, like, it's just good to recognize maybe your role in the other, in the relationship, and then mm-hmm. to acknowledge it if that's something that, like, is your love language. <laughs> um, and I think everybody, like, in any relationship that that goes a long way to, to acknowledge the other person's effort and their role within it yeah. so like it's nice that michael is super spontaneous and in the moment but at the same time you couldn't be that way if you didn't have a planner and yeah. warrior in your life Ex- you know yeah absolutely i yeah. agree yeah all right well thank you so much for being on the pod oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah 18 seconds away from it being a whole hour we love the pod <laughs> Love the pot. Okay.